as we're starting. Well, it says we're live. I'm uh, trying to open up. Uh, I see me. We're live. Nobody in chat yet that I see. That's what, well, I mean, if you just went live, man, it takes a minute. Well, I posted a. I posted a reminder. So if you hit the reminder and you go to the video, it'll post as soon as the reminder comes, like 30 minutes before the show, up to the show. You can actually click into the video through the reminder, and you can get into the live chat 30 minutes prior to the video if they've got the reminder set up. I got you. Okay, well, I'm still working on... Uh... I need to pop this out. Okay. Oh, Duga, John King. What's going on, everybody? Another Thursday night, just coming in to hang out, chat, playing around. I got some 3D printing going on, playing with uh, 3D printing printing pen playing around doing some seaming on some prints fixing some things that didn't work right seeing if it works there's one that i got for free so hey gotta try it and play around don't cool affect some clog good to have you in buddy so what is that thing is it like a little welding machine or something this is a 3d printer this is just a handheld 3D printer. Uh, so Select you can the, like inject the filament yeah, into the it. the filament's here. And it goes into the end of the nozzle here. And, well, actually the front one, this one. So in other words, it's like a 3D printing hot glue gun. Kind of like that, yeah, basically. But yeah, it just goes into here and it goes through. It prints in, that plugs into the wall, so it all powers up to the wall cord. Just plug it in. Sure it does. Maybe. <clears throat> Maybe I don't have it plugged in good. There it goes. Now it powers up. And then the filament, you just fill it in. Once it's warmed up, it's all got to warm up or whatever. But once it warms up, you just fill your filament in, runs through, and prints out the tip. So you can use it for, like, say a project broke like this one. Like I said, it had some seams that were, like, split apart. So I took and seamed it basically just ran a bead all the way down the seam nice and thick in there it basically just melted back together so now it's a full top again no breakage so like if it's on my quad and the seam breaks or something or if a hit takes a good hit starts coming apart i can take that pen the color pla tpu or whatever and run it all in there And anything that gets in the way of uh, uh, the ground and you is good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it, it helps. This is for the turtle molding. So that on top of my ghost, I've actually got a black one on there. Got the black shark fin on it right now. But I wanted to get it to the green. So I printed off a green one. It goes good with the props. It's about a perfect color match. Yeah, it, it's all greened out. I'll, it originally, if you can see the paint job around the carbon fiber edges and everything. All the green TPU onto it. 
got green bot grinder motors on it. So it's all greened out, which is hard to do with a quad these days because not everything comes green. So, yeah. But, yeah, just something playing around with. Another print going. Looks like that one might have to do some things to it. I don't know. I need a better printer. This Chauncey's all right, but. So did you fly today, Mike? No, actually, I didn't fly. I worked all day, came home, took a shower, ate some food, and then had about half hour, 45 minutes to sit here and gather up before the show. So uh, the printer I got is a Tronxy YX2. I actually um, got it for a deal. It was like 239 bucks online, which isn't bad. It runs the Tronxy and it runs the repeater host program, both of them. And um, it's all right. I seem to have some issues with it, but I don't know if it's me or the whatever, but playing around with it still. I just got it working again. I had parts broken. One of these day things. There's always something broken. Yeah. It, it's almost like quads, man. It's always doing something, but. Yeah, I know. The green fat start goggles. So I've, I've got the Attitude V4s, the anniversary ones. You know, actually, uh, Carlos, I. I started to fly and it was getting close to seven, so I wanted to be here for night train. How do you like those, man? I like the Attitude V4s. They're the smaller field of view versus the HDs and all that, but they were 350 bucks for these and it came with a basic module, so it's not bad. The ones that just came out, the new V5s, are the same Attitude goggle. This is green and wrapped instead and it comes with a second bay this doesn't have the second bay over here whereas the v5 has a second bay and it's got it set up for telemetry receivers where this only came with a basic one antenna receiver when it came so i've upgraded to the true d so but yeah other than that they've got the oled screen on the new ones they've got the diversity module that comes with it a little bit better pad, and they're green. Other than that, they're the same goggle. What so, do they mean by triple patch? Uh, what, what are you talking about? Stu's triple patch that he was talking? I don't it's, know what I'm talking about. I, a triple pad, a triple feed would be like having three modules, whereas diversity has two modules and it switches back and forth between the two modules. Whichever one has the best signals, the module that pulls. So a triple feed would be three modules flipping between each other, which officially, I believe, the, what is it, the e -Sheen V2s or something like that, you can put dual diversities. So you'd have four, you'd have quadversity. Crazy. Unless that was seamless, I could see that being a real issue. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how seamless it would be. But that I couldn't tell you. I've been yeah. I've always been scared and I love the look of the the fat sharks whatever but i mean i need reading glasses for stuff up close and it always scared me i get these cool ass head this cool ass headset and then uh not be able to see anything so this is what i'm printing right now this was the first one that ran today while i was at work and i couldn't check on it because i was at work but it's got layer separation issues Separating here and here, here, kind of pulling apart. So we made some adjustments and we're trying a little bit different thing, running it again. Looks better this time, so we'll see. But yeah, I, I don't know. It's just tweaks, I think, mostly. 
I'm only running the Troncy program. I don't run the repeater host host program. Um, I tried it a couple of times on this printer. And it seemed like when I did, I always had all kinds of excess extrusion and this and that. So it was probably settings of some sort between the two. And I just quit fighting with it because I wanted to learn the basics of the printer first. So it's probably getting to the point now I need to like say, yeah, okay, well, let's get into something a little more complicated and actually work on this thing. Edge, Centroid, let's see who else, Waxfire. That's fine. I, you ain't got an admin yet. We need to fix that. Definitely fixed. Oh, who else we got in here? Lots and lots. 3D printing is, is good, though. It definitely saved me some money having a 3D printer. And even if you waste five or six times printing something, that one time you print, it only takes like 20 bucks for a big roll. And the stuff I've printed off of one roll of TPU is, yeah, crazy stuff. I mean, I got gimbal guards. That's all TPU. So they're soft. Nice protectors. Antenna mounts. Oops. Let's see what we got. What's up? High band covers. Oh, wow. What's going on, buddy? You made it. Yeah. Got the old cover for the patches. All kinds of little stuff. All my camera mounts pretty much all. I think one camera. The only one I got so far is a Brain 3D that I still run, but all the rest are all my friends, so. Get it done enough to get it done. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, it probably got you back more into 3D printing now, didn't it? <laughs> so what's Adam been up to besides working his butt off today? That's all Just I ever do. <laughs> now I got uh, I got a chef for you. I have to even tell you that. Check that out. Ooh, the Mamba. Yeah, dude. ESC that, flight controller combo. That's an F7 stack? Yep. Yeah. I was going to do that, but I didn't have the money to test. Well, I seen retail. I was like 80 bucks, and they're like, hey, you know, we'll send you one for 30. I'm like, send it. Oh, yeah, I, I didn't even have the 30 bucks at the time, or I would have. I probably should hit them up and see if they're still looking for testers. Yeah, hit her up. She probably will. The Tina, right? Yep, Dito and Tina. Yep, Diatone Tina. Yeah, if you guys don't have Diatone Tina on your Facebook, check her out, man. We do lots of giveaways, and she puts lots of stuff out there. Uh, Adam just picked up. That's the F7 Mamba stack. He was saying he got it for like 30 bucks or something like that. It's going to be 90 bucks or something like that, 80 bucks when they sell it yeah. on the market. So it's uh testers are out there they were looking for people in the u.s to test it or whatever at a discounted price and give it a run and see how it worked and so yeah you can find some good stuff that way uh so you you know i'm taking that f uh that fox here f405 out of that source one I, I got a perfect frame for that man you want to sell it for 50. what no <laughs> I a freaking frame to put that into sell it to me for 50 dude heck no <laughs> hey roger it should be, it was in los angeles yesterday so by, <laughs> by monday i figure i should have it in hand the jc frame oh oh yeah yeah <laughs> it's already on its way man it's already came overseas gone through shenzhen and come over to Hong Kong and to the U.S. and Los Angeles. And I haven't even checked on it today. I was like, it was L.A. yesterday. It's going to be like Saturday, maybe Monday. I don't know. I'm still waiting on uh, it. You I'm weren't here to... when I was showing these guys. I got a 3D printing pen now. No, actually, I just see it. I just wasn't able to get on it. So, um, <laughs> I printed off the shark top, and I had a layering issue. So I put the old TPU into the pen, and I fixed my shark top. There's no more layer issues now. It, oh, nice. 
so I can seam some stuff back up if we have some small repairs we need with TPU and stuff. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got, got my GoPro mount for my chameleon. Oh, nice. Nice. That's good. His prints are right on right now. He, he's been doing it so much. And oh, these are solid. Yeah. He's got some good prints going. Yeah, dude. These That's are why good. I was thinking that upgrading to a different printer and grabbing the ANET 8 actually so that I can play around like Chris is doing and be able to get him more help with, or get me more help through him yeah, specifically these are, for, you know, printing for this. These are actually better than most of the ones I've bought. Yeah. Uh, they've been comparable from what I've seen from everybody. So, yep. I've had some good ones come out. I like my green one on my Marson, the blue one. I've had some good ones come out. The top that I printed off didn't come out too bad, but uh, well, the challenge. Yeah. The challenge is going to be to get that carbon piece back on top of this fucking frame. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to work. It, Centroid's doing the chameleon mount right now for the Kev FPV. Oh yeah, that's that generic clone chameleon that he got from Six One Six guy. Oh, coffee yeah. what's going on good to have you in coffee music if you guys yeah. like good music and whatnot coffee music has lots of music on his channel for use check him out yeah i gotta do that challenge i gotta get this thing back together and did Bible. mitch kill his show already i see back from the sky was in here and i could have swore he was just over on Mitch's show just a bit ago. So I'm just curious if Mitch killed his show. Or if everybody's just kind of floating. That's cool too. Canadian drone hub. Good to see you. Good to have you in. Oh. So yeah, the weather in Michigan right now is just horrible, people. I don't know if anybody else is having some bad weather, but we've got like the entire state covered with the storm today. And it's supposed to last, I think it's going to break up Saturday afternoon for a little while. And then Monday, I think it's supposed to rain again, possibly. So, I don't know how much flying I'll be able to get in this weekend. What's Adam got going? You got more graduations and stuff this weekend? What? Hell no, thank God. So, what, are we going to fly? I'm, 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 I don't know. The weather's kind of supposed to be nasty. Get that back in, dude. You got tonight and tomorrow. Oh, I ain't flying that no damn some rain. That's a brand new stack. Uh, I got conformal. Well, you got conformal. Oh, yeah, I got conformal. I ain't doing that yet. I'm going to fly <laughs> in there. Yeah. I got I'll fly. I'll fly this on the cam to come in. I ordered a run cam from Get FPV for the Oblivion. So I'm waiting on that to come in. And I got a Unified Nano coming. Oh, that's fine. Try that. I haven't tried that yet, but it's small, dude. And I'm thinking it'll be great to try out on the three inch. It goes up to 400 milliwatt, so it should be good to put on the three inch and get me a little bit more space, be able to move that camera around on that Mach One. Oh yeah. <laughs> that it, I, that's the worst part of flying that Mach One is I got no camera angle, so sometimes I'm looking at the ground because it's so quick. Just seeing how do you even do that? I mean, how do you, how do you know where you're at when you're looking at the ground? Real carefully, Ed. Lots of practice in the camera, man. That's how the, the, lots of times getting out there and trying to push yourself a little further and your camera angle is too much, but you were like, no, I ain't turning it up because then I'm looking at the sky when I try to land. You get over it. Finally, you just turn that camera angle up a little bit more. But Yeah, it, it, the Mach 1 Mini here camera angle and the stack is so tight on it. I was showing you that the other night. I, I can't move the camera angle. I mean, it's the back of the cam connector. Is oh, yeah, that, that isn't high at all. Right on the board. So, so let, me, let me ask you this. Can't this you... kind of an angle. And running 4S, it kind of gets me down like this looking at the ground quite a bit. Well, well let me oh. ask you a question then. Uh, Cause see, I've seen it in um, beta, beta flight, and it there's it talks about camera angles. So can you digitally 
No. Raise the, the camera, camera angle that Beta Flight talks about is basically to give the flight controller some kind of sense of the direction and forward momentum that you're doing so that it knows how to let off or give more power to certain motors because of that angle. It's just trying to help beta flight can, you know, run smoothly in your air modes and whatnot. That's all that camera angle and beta flight actually does. Gotcha. Gotcha. Chuck it. Chuck it. I was always afraid to screw with it, though, at the right zero degrees, you know. <laughs> no, I always... Uh, Mr. Steele said in one of his videos, he always put it at 28, just because he usually flies at like 20 to 30 camera angle, this or that. So he always put it at about 28 and left it. So I've always done the same. I've never noticed any different. And I've forgotten to do it sometimes and never even noticed the difference in the flight either. So I don't know that it does a whole lot to beta flight. Yeah, that's what I thought. Helps with the motor mixing as far as the angle because it tells the gyro that you're going in that forward momentum naturally for your horizon that way. Once you put that camera to horizon and your quads tilt like this, your cam's like this, it just tells beta flight that kind of angle. Give it something to work with to help it smooth it. Don't worship. Port box. Pew, pew, pew. Those Floridians must eat some crazy food down there. Always walk around farting. <laughs> so what? You saying you don't fart? I didn't say that. I just fart <laughs> all the time like that. I mean, he's like, every time he walks into a stream, it's like, I walk through the door, well... Yeah, it's food sweats, right? Meat sweats. All that good stuff. What do you keep pulling with? That's a tight with, fit, Adam. ain't it, Adam? What's that? That's a tight fit, ain't it? I can't. I don't think that it's going to fit. Do you have the foam on that plate, too? No, I just cut it off. Oh, you should have left the foam on. It's a tight fit, but it's, it would, I don't know. If oh, it's the same amount that I did for, that I had for um, Richard Coggins' a chameleon it's got the plate that goes all the way through complete wrap around that plate it'll fit with the foam on there if it's the same one but it is tight as heck to get I, don't know. I was afraid i was going to rip things apart or something at first i i think that's if why you Chris don't use the foam, though, <laughs> if you don't use the foam it ends up being a little bit sloppy <laughs> on the, on the oh that's okay i strap it down with a better strap oh, anyway yeah. I don't know that's the same. No, I don't think it is the same. That looks like a side mount, isn't it? Yeah, it's a side mount. Yeah, it's not the same that I did for Richard, though. Richard's was a top mount. It was basically the top mount like you had on there, but where it had the standoff wraps, you know, for the aluminum rope bars, yeah. it was just a whole slot. It wrapped all the way around that carbon fiber plate like you got that slips all the way through the center of it on the bottom. Hey, worthless days. I've never seen you before, but you have a wrench. So obviously Mike knows you. Well, no, I already got that way has a wrench. Yeah, what I've do you do, worthless? Streams. Stays at well, enough aggressive enough to hit some speed in freestyle. If if you get too much more than that in freestyle, it becomes all kind of upside down kind of flight freestyling, you know, or too much speed to really do a whole lot. I try to keep it around twenty five to thirty myself for freestyle. Uh, racing, that's a different story. Racing, I've learned from liftoff and whatnot and i try to put my camera angle up more towards 40 45 or something like that for racing i would lose it i have to work my butt off to slow my bird down yeah slow down why would you want to slow down send it <laughs> I, yeah I know. look man 
He still I love know it. all the time them power lines are always in his way. <laughs> There's all kinds of crap in my way. Now, <laughs> but that being said, that being said, I've seen y'all fly through a lot denser stuff than what I got. Oh, that's not just smoke, Chalk. I guess I got messed up lighting and shit. There's a link for the Hangouts if anybody wants to come in, join the panel, participate in the chat too, as far as that goes. Feel free to come on in. It's not just FPV here, guys. We can talk regular drones too, GPS. It might not be as much chat, but, you know, I intend to build off of that. I plan to be getting some GPS-type drones and working them a little bit more so here myself, so. Uh, how's this print coming? Slow, but sure. Son of a bitch, man. Hey, I want to give a little shout out to Rodney Bell who sent this cool shirt to me. Rodney, Rodney Bell. As, as long as, as well as a nice mug. That, that I I got to get one of the mugs. Ah, my hands on one of them Rodney Bell mugs. I'll heat it up uh -oh. a little bit. Uh-oh. Yeah, he... <laughs> he says, I'll fix this. If you melt it too much, even this pen won't fix it, though. Just oh, no. <laughs> Just cleaning up the loose ends? No, I'm uh, heating it up to soften it up. Maybe I, I can oh, push that carbon plate in there. easier. You know, worthless days. You, uh, um, I check. I went to your channel because I, I, I didn't remember your name, but then I went to your channel and I saw that I already had you subscribed. So uh, I got you queued up. So I'll, I'll visit your place. But um, I, I, uh, I know because of your picture, and on your picture, you got some goggles on, and that means you FPV, and FPV is life. So far, this is my Long Ranger. This is my Alien Rig Kits V2 with just the Crossfire Micro onto it. But she does good range. I got to get some better antennas FPV side. That'll be that, but. Yeah, GPS. Yeah. Now that's that's gonna be way more fun. That I can't wait. I I got my only GPS bird does like five hundred meters. You know, it's like the Sima five kind of thing. You know, it does decent video, but if you get a little bit of wind, it's crap. It doesn't really hold up because it's brushed motors, not brushless. So. If it had some brushless motors, it would probably do pretty good. I, wise. I don't think this thing is going to work. Phantom Flight 101, good evening. Good to have you coming in. You guys have How you doing, Norman? Wednesday nights on Phantom Flight 101's channel is Wednesday nights with those guys at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I believe it is. And then they also do another stream, I believe, on Sundays at 5 p.m. with those guys on Novice Quad's channel. Check them out. Drone effects with Claude. Well, he's got a live stream pretty much like every three hours or so there's going to be one <laughs> for the most part. And we all know that Roger, well, godfather of live streaming and FPV and droning is always on. Uh, back from the sky, do you have a, a regular show yet going? I'm doing pretty good, buddy. I'm doing good. It, pretty nice, relaxed day. It rained all day here today. So, um, be right back. Not a whole lot of flying. I thought about charging a pack or two, but about the time I get a pack or two charged, it'll probably come down pouring again on me. So I said, the heck with it for today. I actually discharged a few last, like four or five packs yesterday. I burned them down because they were getting like four days out. I was like, nope, better discharge those. We got more rain coming. So I 
hit and missed in between the rain showers last night before it hit us. Just an old guy with a new hobby, huh? Yeah, that's me. The wife's wondering what my new hobby is going to be after this one, but. Yeah, you think you'll ever wear it out where you want another hobby, Mike? I printed this last night, Chuck, and I'm printing. This one I printed while I was at work, but it screwed up. I had some layer issues or whatever. I just changed the tip out and changed a bunch of settings, and so I'm reprinting this right now. It's for the ghost mode, too. But yeah, printer's finally running again. I'm playing with my new 3D print pen, too. So I can fix some prints with it when I fail. So uh, you guys know <laughs> that... Uh, I saw that, Claude, Claude. Eight hours. <coughs> eight hours. Now Claude's got his receiver to work. Because they had sent him a European version, even though he had asked yeah. for an American. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, at least he's got it figured out what it was, and everything's good, and he's flying now. It, it, that was a struggle for us a few weeks ago, trying to figure out what was up with novices. But we did get Eric's fixed, and yep. Eric still hasn't flown his Tyro yet, has he? No. Black. Well, where is oh man we're gonna have to bug him i'm gonna rc crazy if you read if you hear this rc crazy you better get that drone in the air buddy we worked hard to get you fixed we want to see you fly it now i actually uh shared the stream to him but he's working a lot so he may not yeah. uh Uh, it wasn't a problem with his FC necessarily, as it was a problem with the flight or the receiver. It was a European flashed receiver trying to do things. They sent him the wrong one, I guess, is what he found out. I know, right? Eric, look. On the other hand, it wasn't. It wasn't even. A, a receiver or a flight controller issue with RC Crazy either. His was um just not having it flashed and set properly, and we figured that out on the show. It was in PPM mode yeah. or CPM C mode. CPM mode was. instead of S bus mode on the RXSR receiver. And the same crap that novice quad. I I was just sure. It was right. going to get fixed too, you know, because we were, I was sure it was the same damn thing as Eric's. Damn it. Adam must be working on stuff. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> So yeah, that 3D printer worked pretty good at healing up those. I had some seams that didn't quite heal up. So I used the 3D printer and the pen and reformed them so that they're all healed up now. So they don't separate anymore good to go. There's probably so many settings on those things that you can play around with. This well, Mark was awesome. saying it earlier. Uh, that Mark, machine Mark was kinds of stuff. earlier that uh, every print different has its own little quirks, you know, and they all want those magic buttons pushed just the right way for whatever filament you're using. Thanks for stopping in, Chuck. Drive safe, buddy. Oh, YouTube kicked you off at seven. Now, how do I've seen? Channels do 24-hour streams. So is there a setting that you can change in YouTube to do a longer than eight-hour stream? Or is it just a standard now that they've changed to that you can only do eight hours? Because when I first got into FPV, um, 
who was it? It was uh, FPV Life was the channel. Did a 24-hour stream, man. They had, like, from Australia all the way across the United States, they had, like, people on all, for 24 hours nonstop. They were on. As a lot well, of I, I, will tell you, I will tell you this, that uh, there's somebody I go see if I just want to hear some good music. Jam House. Mm -hmm. Jam House is awesome. And yep. uh, he has to reset his stream every so often yeah but the way he does it somehow the it just goes right to the next stream if you set him up in advance and probably just kicks you to the next one or whatever something i don't know ow motherfucker son of a bitch and oh, also yeah. it's yeah he's on working on stuff now yeah, what I'm getting you, cut. <laughs> Carbon fiber. What are you doing over there? Oh man? no! The last time, the last time we saw you get cut with cams and whatnot around working on stuff, you ended up with like a dot in the middle of your face or something like that, bro. Yeah, I, I stabbed myself in the face with side cutters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I've only had one beard. Ain't like I'm drunk. <laughs> I just can't get this man. It cut the hell out of me. Holy shit! Let's we'll right. see the blood, man. If it ain't bleeding good, then you ain't cut. Yeah, I'm cut, but it ain't bleeding. Uh, those are the worst kind. I always like a little blood. Yeah, carbon fiber is a sharp. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, back from the sky, I know that when you do, hey, Michael, how are you, brother? The, that when you start a live event through Google, using Google as your streaming thing, then it says right on there when you start at eight hours. But if it's direct through YouTube, I don't know. Hey, Ryan. How are you, brother? Well, Adam, are you a little bit frustrated? <laughs> it's pissing me off. I'm done. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to set shit off to the side, man. It's like, okay, let me think about this. Put my screws away so I don't lose them. You got any KY? Maybe it'll slip right in then. Right, a spin on it. <laughs> what, that chick come back around or something? Oh, I just didn't check number last. <laughs> <laughs> you said she was starting to bug again or something. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so far, so good, Michael. Cheers to you and Till. Oh, I'm good. I'm not. I'm just drinking iced tea myself, so <laughs> we'll be good tonight. What's going on, guys out there? Sorry, I was ignoring everybody. I uh, well, Michael McReynolds, good to have you in. Ryan, good to see you, buddy. I'm hanging in there, Ryan. Thank you for asking. How about you? So, Carlos, so you didn't get in the fly today or what? Who flew today? Let's see in the chat who flew today. Wish I did. It never stops raining. Yeah. It's right. been it's raining here. I, I, when I got home, I, uh, it wasn't raining, and I could have flown and should have flown, but I didn't. Looks like it might be finally letting up. Maybe I should charge a pack just in case. And Test out that three inch. See if that antenna works pretty good on it or not. I put a little dipole whip onto it. <laughs> Could you believe it had a full axi mount on it or a full like pigtail on this thing? Oh, really? Yeah. So I put a little dipole onto it. Yeah, it was I, a it was a full size pigtail with a axi stubby on it. 
Didn't work, huh? I smashed it on the ground, busted up the axle stubby off, the whole oh. casing lost it. I was like, all right. So I just fly it that way. You know, it was still intact inside. A couple more crashes. It started peeling apart. I took some electrical tape and wrapped it around, you know, to kind of hold it so it didn't, like, slip away or whatever. Uh, a couple more crashes. The electrical tape and the whole top. It's all it's got the disc on it now. Well, what could we have here? Uh, here somewhere. Baduga. Oh, he dropped back off. Damn it. Ryan, all those are glorified. What are those attitudes? They're, they're the attitude V4s with OLED. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I think it's this going except for the camera, though, Adam. Oh, yeah. Don't throw that lens away. Oh, the lens cover or the whole lens? The whole lens. Oh, you need it? Oh, yeah, I can use the lens. I can say it's a Fox here. It'll probably fit the same thing as the run cams and everything, so. Oh, I'm okay. The whole camera. I, I know that you put for the, the lens cap on. Huh? Edge, let me find it for you real quick. I know that you put the lens cap on. Yeah, because it's brand new and haven't used it yet. I was playing around with okay. settings, and trying to adjust the settings and reset a bunch of stuff because the camera on it is like looking in the sunlight. I, so I went in the settings and tried turning the brightness down and this and that, tried to get it to work right. And I thought I had it pretty good. It looked pretty good in here. And then I walked outside, <coughs> got outside and hit the sunlight, man. It just whoosh. So it's obviously the sensor on its crap. So. The, the, the reason I asked that, here's the reason I asked that. Because, I mean, I... I don't, I never bother putting the lens caps on anymore because I always lose them. Well, first of all, the lens takes a lot more abuse while you're flying them than they do when they're <laughs> just laying around. Yeah, it's not gonna do the only thing that I know of that is good for the lens cap is cameras are known that if you put them into direct sunlight, they can mess with the uh the panel or whatever it is, the little sensor okay. or whatever. So just like your fat chart goggles or, or like that, you're not supposed to turn them so that the direct sunlight goes inside the eyewear area. It, it's bad for them. It'll kill your fat sharks, they say. Kill any goggles. Yeah. So I, I didn't know if it was all goggles or uh, just this, those type of goggles or this or that because, I mean, it, you could do it like you're – camera lens on your computer and whatnot most of the time it does pretty good with light and whatnot but yeah you can kill that the camera doing that on there too they say so just good practice i guess but i never use them once my quads together and it's flowing the camera covered up, the lens cup doesn't go back on no i'm Man, gonna that i'm gonna break that lens cool. anyway i was doing the reset and one of the resets, if you go into your cam settings, one of the resets is like WDR or this or that or something like that. Anyway, it, you put your lens cap on and then you push enter and it does some kind of like calibration on your lens and this or that or the other thing. So that's why it was on there having it around playing with that. Then when it didn't work, I was like, I heck with it. So it's just sitting on there until I pull the camera out and put a different camera in this week. So. Yeah, I, I used to, Edge. I used to use those caps, man. I lose them the second I get them anyway. And lenses are cheap, and I never have one last me more than a couple months. I, I'm constantly more. replacing them. Sweet too, Adam. First of all, You're ripping the micros, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, eight fifties, buddy. Yeah, I need to try one of those. Already accused. So. For the most part, you're not going to scratch your lenses, break your lenses, crack your lenses when it's sitting on the shelf or on the workbench or whatever. You're going to crack it when you're flying. So what the hell is good is the use of a lens cap? Keeps the dust off. Keeps the cigarette tobacco tar off your lens so that when you okay. go to wipe it, it actually wipes instead of just smearing. That could be about the best of it. That's what um, I'll call uh, for. <laughs> the rain X that you use on it because you fly in the wintertime too. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
<laughs> We've been known yeah. to do that. Wipe the lens with some rain X. I got a whole bottle of it. Up in the winter. A little that's bit. A, that's a very good point. And I've often asked people who flew and you can see shit hitting their camera. Why don't you put some uh, rain X on that thing, you know? So, yeah. I could see if you have rain X on your lens why you want to keep put the lens cap on with just sitting around the house. Yeah. You put it on windshields. Windshields hitting bugs and shit all day long. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really was different. Yeah, think about those bugs that Adam just mentioned. You cam lickers out there. Think about that. How many how many bugs have been on smashed onto your camera lens? Go ahead and lick your camera lens again. Clean it. No, I'd rather I don't lick my that. Lens, that baby out of wipe it with a rag or something than lick my lens, guys. <laughs> Why don't we have any videos? Somebody doing that. Now I will spit on my finger and wipe wasn't that. There, lens wasn't off. there a video of the lens lickers or something like that? Was that an icky video? There's always a cam licker out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, cam lickers. A bunch of cam lickers. <laughs> you know they're FPV if they're a cam licker. <laughs> if they're in the GPS, they got those nice little rags like these, you know. Clean it all off with. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Carla. That's what I do too, brother, man. So I've, I've actually have a few videos where it shows me spitting on my finger and Swinging the lens off, and then I wipe it with the shirt. Or I'll spit on my shirt, use my shirt to wipe it. But yeah, I don't like the cam. <laughs> I'm but more sophisticated than that. I can actually carry lens cleaners. So I wear glasses. So <laughs> that's some hardcore FPV pilots that are out there, like doing like six hour, seven hour days hiking through the woods and whatnot, and then bring enough nutrition with them. They lick their cameras for nutrition. <laughs> it's survival techniques. <laughs> Extra protein so you don't drop out on yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Ick, Icky is a piece of work yeah. for those days. You don't uh, Icky rocks. <laughs> you don't fly much anymore, though. Uh, he's no, back why is that? I, I think he's just flying for fun when he flies. I don't think he's flying to do videos necessarily right now. No, nah, he's just enjoying he is flying life. because I see him doing some photo type stuff still. As yeah, far as flight and FPV. And well, he's got a new baby on the way, and he's just busy. Well, that's a lot of the thing. He's got the new kid coming, so that makes two in the house to run around and chase. But he's got the one that he's chasing already. She's what three, four? Yeah, she's three or four now. Something like that. Anyway, so he's chasing her. He's working as a fireman full time. He got a dirt bike, trying to enjoy some other things too, and not just concentrate into FPV. Kind of break it away. He was felt it was getting too monotonous and just beating him up. So he's like kind of slipped away. And, but he's got a lot of things going on in the community and beyond the community as far as some of his photo and artistry type capabilities that he's used as far as that so he's still out there he's just not as frequent in the fpv community and scene up front right now but yeah, he's there's, there's, a, there's a few people that have dropped off the map for that very reason kid you know got a new kid whatever i i, I died off during the winter time there for like a month and a half two months i didn't do any content i Basically, the only time you see me was on somebody else's stream, hanging out or something, you know, in chats and this and that. I wasn't flying a whole lot this winter and whatnot, but I flew for like a year and a half, two years straight, like trying to fly every day. And oh, it, then it got to the point where it's like, man, I'm flying all the same spots and my car's broke down and it's winter time and I can't go to these epic spots and I'm tired of this and that. And so we get that way. So, the, only, the only cool thing about flying in the winter is there's nobody there. Yeah, there's no kids tearing up the, the fields and whatnot. You got a full field of white blanket out there to play around on. The, the wintertime's nice, too, I found with these houses that I've worked on. I, I got some of those nice flights over the lake that I didn't have to worry about my quad 
falling in the water. If it lands on the ice, I could get somebody to go get it for me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'd say you're not going out there to get it. It but. depends. Uh, the one where I did where it was feeling rusty, I think, is the video. I would have went out there. The dude was out there. There was already trails on the on the ice and everything from snow machines and everything at that point. So it was solid enough. He said, just watch the edge. But the guy lived on the lake there, and he had also had a house on the other side. So he knew the lake real well and knew where all the good spots to enter and exit. So, yeah, I would have had no problem. He did fired up his four-wheeler probably and gone out and picked it up for me with his four-wheeler. Oh, hey, Mike, guess who's back in the game? Huh. Homegrown Canadian. Yeah, yeah. He Well, he changed jobs there for a while. That's where a lot of his, him went. He uh, had changed jobs and was doing, like, away for, like, four months at a time or something like that, where he was home for two months and then away for four months or whatever. But, yeah, I started seeing a couple posts and stuff from him recently. Yeah, yeah. He commented on one of my videos. I'm like, where the hell you been, bro? <laughs> Give it <Yeah>. a shot. <laughs> Anthony South, welcome in. Anthony is uh, in the music and whatnot, guys. If you want to check out his channel, does a lot of live stream where he hangs out and chats and plays music and whatnot. I've I've seen uh, Carlos. I've seen Asgard recently, at least in a stream, but not a uh, PD Tech. Yeah. People get burned out at times or they're not flying or they don't think they have anything to share sometimes. There's always something. Yeah, I don't know. It might be this. Crap. Hey, novice, how you doing, man? When are you going to make in that center loop, by the way? Well, it's good to see you put that hammer away, bro. Didn't have to break your quad. Right. Oh, I forgot about the hammer. Yeah. Right. It's the rest of those guys. Almost got Herman's voice down for that, don't I? Those guys. Yeah, we'll be here for another hour or so. So, otherwise, we'll probably be over at the hot dog stream that comes on at nine o'clock. You guys haven't been over to Team Hot Dog? Check them out, guys. They do a stream every Thursday night. Hot dog team. Sometimes they do some giveaways and stuff. Some cool stuff. Hot dog straps, T-shirts, lanyards. What else do they get? Lots of stuff. I don't know. Dude, I'd probably make it 20 minutes in one of their shows and I'm off the bed. It's just on too late for me. Yeah. Well, that's why I tried to – that was part of the reason why we started ours at, at you know, 7 to 9 is so that you could have a chance to stream and whatnot and be on some stuff and – not kill yourself staying up late. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you start by nine, dude. There's a chance I might be shit faced drunk and ready to go to bed. You know, <laughs> I'm just not gonna do it. I wanted to watch West Side stream last night, but he didn't even start until midnight. Yeah, I can't do that. Now. And then about that time, I playing around with Prince and whatnot, and I ended up staying up to like almost one anyway. But it wasn't because of streaming; it was because I was doing other stuff. So. Oh, well. Seems to be my habit this week, staying up till 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Look at that yeah. smile going across that <laughs> He's like, yeah, buddy. Uh, it was all kinds of the night that night. It was fun. Some good stuff on there. All right, so uh, the, the bird... Uh... Novice Quad's got going. He's going to maiden her to Sunday. Sunday. Excellent. Is that going to be for the stream Sunday? Or before the stream Sunday, and then we'll talk about it on the stream. 
Yeah, I don't think he can do it live with that bird. Unless he uh, has a camera pointed into the extra pair of goggles or something. Ground station. I need to get me a ground station. I need that's the next thing I need to build. So with a ground station, Adam, could you uh, could you directly link the video you receive into your stream? You know what? I don't know. I know if you put you know if you put your camera that you're streaming from, like a phone or whatever, you know, and put it up to a mic stand on that. Well, see, that's what would be cool, because I can't imagine, because I've seen the people, and some of them get it down pretty good, but it's hard to get your phone situated just well, right to catch it. I don't use the phone so much as I use the ground stuff. <coughs> that's the thing, is having something to be able to put it on to. Seven-inch monitor. So you're not trying to get it off a tiny little thing. You get this into a nice closed area, you can really get it off that monitor easy enough. That's like us when we when I've done it over there at the park and got onto some streams or whatever, like on Facebook. I'll set it up in a shaded area, so I've got a stand on the phone facing directly at that, and that's got its own stand, so it makes it easier. Well, you got daylight out there. You should be. Doing that right now, bro. It, it's raining out there right now. I'm on. Uh, it looks bright out the window. Oh, that's not the window. That's the light you got turned on. That's a light in the, in the closet. Where the three D keep nice keeps the drafts down on the printer. Hey, Crystal, how's it going? Hey, Crystal, how you doing, babe? Hey, Drang, how are you? Hey, Crystal, did Chris get that, uh, did you get that frame yet? I sent him. Don't remember if they said it was going to be there today or tomorrow. Hey, Crystal, just one more day. One more day. <laughs> Bless you. <coughs> That's right. Weekend's coming. Right around the corner now. Be here in no time. <clears throat> so how's everybody's weather going to be this weekend? Shitty tomorrow, they say. Saturday, it's supposed to dry up. And then Sunday's supposed to be decent enough to hopefully get out. That's my intention, anyway. I still got to do that challenge with Chuck, or for Chuck. Oh, the tree thing? Yeah. I'm going to tear that challenge up, dude. <laughs> I'm all about that. I love that shit. Yeah, I I, I don't know. You got to have the right tree. My trees around here stuck. Oh, dude, I got the tree picked out. That monitor park in Bay City is perfect. It's got nice little limbs to fly through. Yeah, I got it. I already got the tree. So when are you gonna do that? Uh first nice day I get. Well, there you go. Nice. 
97. Man, I ain't that bad. I, you know, worthless. The thing is, is uh, that sounds hot. You know, I live in Florida, so we're pretty damn hot over here, too. And uh, the uh, it's all about the wind. If you got a little sea breeze I, in California, I don't know about California. I've never been there. But in Florida, if you're five miles from the coast, usually you're all right. Well, it never rains in Southern California. That's a lie. <laughs> that is a song. That's an old song, Mike. Yeah. It never rains in Southern California. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Cigarette. This is bugging me. I want the Sonic Five so bad. It just ain't fitting for you, huh? It won't. The, car the carbon fiber plate is wider than the hole to slip it through there. Hmm. That's not cool. It's going in there. If I gotta file that thing down more, it's going in there. He says it's gonna make it, dang it. I don't care. Watch. Watch it. So who here, who here has ever been to Florida? Oh, I've been to Florida. It's one of the few states I haven't made it to. I haven't been to Florida, yeah, and I haven't been up above like Virginia and all that towards like the, the the New England states and all that. So where were you at in Florida, Adam? We uh went to Orlando. Oh God, the hottest. Freaking place in Florida there is. It was hot. I tell you what. Last week, we got no. back on Monday, Monday night. Those lizards running around your legs and shit, going up trees. That's some weird shit. I don't know how you guys put up with that. I don't know if I like the shark fin better or not. Yeah. Green looks yeah, better no, than that. I've had to get rid of a few myself just to do the same thing. There's a ratio. If you are subscribed too many people versus your subscribers, it will do that. So what you do is you just look at those that have never been by your place, never visited your stream, and uh, those are who you get rid of. Yeah, that's not my job. I'll let YouTube do that. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't work that way, Adam. Uh, Coach, that uh, at least for me, I, I, I don't know what what screwed up about YouTube doing it is that I've had people that I actually watch their stuff get the you know unsubscribe for me, whereas there's these others that. Like I said, never come by, never comment, even though you've been to their place, you know, and um, I just, I rang too many bells when I first started doing this crap. That's all. Yeah, I used to do that. I was doing sub for subs at first, like for the first like 75 to 100. And I was like, man, ain't nobody stopping by my channel. Ain't nobody doing this or that. Oh, Edge the Tree Channel. That is, you have to fly a five-inch quad. You have to use one set of props and four batteries, and you have to film, or you have to actually post all your crashes. Yep, four packs, one set of props, five-inch quad, one tree. First of all, the only way I would make that many props is if I got a really low milliamp-hour battery. <laughs> Then I might make four four packs. And does that does that mean that you it's a one set of props, so that means you get to change up to four props or no props at all? One set of props, period. That's all you can use is one set. So put a brand new set on and go for it. 
I'm gonna make that tree my bitch. Just watch. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, that and that should be the title of your video, Adam, is making this tree my bitch. Oh no, Ed, you have to, you have to, you have to go right through that tree. You can play around it, but you have to go through the limbs. No, I get that. I totally get that. I knew that's what it was about. Oh yeah. And I'm gonna do that anyway. <laughs> that's the fun part about it. Probably be a good idea that the ground's gonna be soft though, because I don't see myself breaking the props on the tree. Well, I thought about that big tree that we fly over there at Emerson, but man, there's so many other trees around that one. Yeah, you're gonna get a tree. I'm stuck. gonna be in the yeah. ceiling for days trying yeah. to get my quads back. Yeah. You know? I'm going for the 14, 15 foot tree. I got that ladder. I got my painting pole. Down there at Showboat, there's quite a few good spots, probably, where there's like one tree out in the middle of nowhere. You could find a good spot to rip around. Oh, there in Chesnay? I'm trying to think of trees that got some nice open branches, big, huge trees that are like in an open area where there isn't a bunch of other trees around it, though. Only one I can think of is Monitor Park there in Bay City. Or that you know that line I flew what was a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. The only that's the only spot I can think of. Yeah, the three trees. Yeah. But you can't go in and out of those trees that much. You can just loop around and dive it and this and that. I'm talking mm -hmm. a big huge tree where you could go up in the branches and be able to Oh you know, yeah. Like I do over there at Emerson where I'll flip through the branch or forward roll or this or that, you know, actually hitting gaps and stuff. There is that tree at Roberts Park. On that one part I've of the field. Roberts over there at the soccer field. Yeah, if you go to um, if you go down to the right a little bit, there's that great big monster oak. Down around the corner. Yep, and then there's those other trees over by that uh, that big ass pavilion they got that great big huge one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, where I couldn't see when I was flying that one time with the shitty BTX. Hopefully next month I have some wheels to be able to get around more so I can get down there. It'll be easier to catch up with you on Saturdays or Sundays that way. Oh, yeah. Especially It'll be there, Crystal, tomorrow. Especially with Mom living close and needing so many car repairs lately. Oh, oh <laughs> man, that car sucks. I'm so sick of working on that car. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but how do you work at a dealership? You can't fix Mama's car? No, oh, I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm about ready to go buy her a car. <coughs> You're a mechanic. I see your uniform. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't mean I want to rinse when I'm off work, Ma. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Get on a wheel bearing for six hours with a fucking sledgehammer. Break three sledgehammers. Yeah, that was a great time. <laughs> if you can't fix my car, then I'm taking your truck. Yes, and <laughs> we were talking about the FU tree challenge, Mark. She ain't uh, flying my truck. <laughs> uh, I, I my truck it officially is the one that put it out. It's four packs, a five inch quad, one set of props, and one tree. Fun challenge. Worst you can do is break your quad. Is that Baduga's video of it right there, or is that Chuck's video of it? Come on, Mark. You you built it. You can fix it. The challenge video right there. Okay, there you go. There's the tree challenge video posted by Baduga FPV in the chat, people. There's been some fails, and the fails videos have been posted as well. So it, it's all good, clean fun. I'm sure everybody'd like to see your attempts. It's going to be a tough one. So yeah, it's going to be lots that, of attempts. So that's the whole fail. point of having the post of crashes. So we're definitely looking to see some fails too. Uh, the, more, the objective what you is, have to get, do is one set of props. And you got to fly four packs the whole time, playing inside through a tree. Yep. Not around it, not yep. ordering it. 
one tree. Whatever you can possibly fly through, around, all that. Basically, proximity of tree. If you can find one that's nice, you can go through. That's preferred. Uh, Chuck's wasn't all that big and open when he went through his tree. So uh, the tight spots are welcome. Push yourself. That's kind of the challenge of it. Find some small, tight gaps. We don't want to just see like a power loop of a tree and S curve, you know, diving down stuff. Uh, we want, yeah, looking to see some attempts at least at some nice gaps and crashes and stuff. That correct <laughs> from great tree right. work. It's one set of props. That's the thing. One set of props, four batteries, and one tree. Five inch quad is required too. You can't use your little three inch or two and a half inch baby hawk or at all. No, that don't count. Yeah, Five you know he made that. Five. He made that rule the fuck with me. You know that, right? Oh, uh, so well, I think somebody had posted something about a tree, and they were like, "Well, what can you do with just one tree?" And I think it was during that stream that night that they were like, "Oh," and so Chuck, well, let's up it. Let's put out a challenge because we we're talking how that we were doing like on the noob crew. We were doing like a monthly challenge on the noob channel. So like Josh was what one pack this or certain tricks that you can do or like uh, Icky put up the basketball hoop, <laughs> fly through a hoop <laughs> with a five inch quad that was uh, off the backboard through the hoop, that kind of thing, you know? Wow. So yeah. There's been some interesting challenges out, but that's the one that they come up with for this last time. A few tree challenge. It, it, they said five inch quad was part. It, it should say in the the video that Baduga posted. It should have all the requirements of that video for that video. That's what to do. So, if not, hey, hit Chuck it up and say, hey man, what's the stipulations? What are the specifics? You're going to put out a challenge. Make sure it's all out here. We need all the details. You're going to have people trying to shortcut if you can. No. Yep. McDonald's arch challenge is also up there. Five that, inches through the, the arch. Arnold arch was awesome. Yep. That's from MD95. Put that one out. McDonald's arch challenge. He took a five inch quad and flew through the golden arches. So, but five golden arches it's available that has one that's actually got arches a lot of people yeah. say that theirs have like a solid paneled sign up there's no arch yeah. to go through so uh, you no have to hunt. Now, <coughs> I'd take the Mobula through some arches but uh, I don't know about a 5 inch no, dude, I'm not doing it with a five inch. Yeah, that's what I should do is just one up it and put the six inch out there, right? Yeah. Throw the marshal <laughs> into it. Any place around here, cops are coming, dude. You fly a quad, a five inch quad around that sign anywhere around me, yeah, you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, the McDonald's is around <laughs> too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, you're hit. Crash <laughs> it. Oh <laughs> yeah, that's like the cop central. They run up and down that strip all day. That one and Bay. Between those two strips, that's like. Yeah. Cool thing is, though, between that water tower and Roberts Park, cops mm -hmm. know me pretty well now. <laughs> That's how we got to know them over in this yeah. area, too. They, they like, like it. And I don't know if anybody's seen me circling them around here. They don't care. No, they like the it. The cops actually it. weren't in the car when I circled it. but Oh, I knew you wouldn't do okay. that with the cops in that car. I was like, the he's not. Were around, but they don't have any problem. They were actually at the trailer that was right by the not the one sideways but the one regular they were at that trailer and i actually flew over the top of them and was looking dive down kind of thing and trying to get them on the gopro and see what they were up to but yeah they were looking for somebody in the neighborhood that night oh yeah some like 15 year old or something that hadn't been home for three days or this or that and yeah trailer drama Trailer drama. Mine oh, used to yeah. remember, remember Mike when mine used to be nice and calm. I used to tell you, man, I never seen a kid in years out here. Yeah. And ever since these people right. sold the park, they got oh man. That's it, not as limited as far as the people coming in now, huh? Well, let's put it this way. I gotta start locking my shit up. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. 
especially being up, well you're probably better off being up towards the front that's probably yeah. the best place because you know there's so much in and out in and out people mm. are always keeping kind of an eye you know they'll notice things a little bit more than being towards the back of that place that thing's huge that park that's like four or five times the size of this place oh it is it's huge i think we've got i think there's like 70 80 trailers listed in here or something like that so, yeah, there's probably two, three hundred here. Yeah, that's what I say. Wow, that's big. It's a huge trailer park. And I fly my crawl all over the place. Adam, Adam <laughs> it's like between two streets around yeah. his house, and he's got he's got as much area flying them two little strips around that, that he flies as I do over here. I got a little track. Well, no, I've I've seen your track, uh, Adam. It looks pretty cool. It's fun. Having them vacancies there are nice. Open lots. Vacancies help. Yeah. It gives them more space to play without people being pissy. Yep. The only my neighbor my neighbors only ask is I don't fly over their stuff. So no flying over their houses or anything like that. Oh, Except well, for mine. That problem. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, oh <laughs> I see him out there as I'm flying around standing on their porch trying to keep up with me flying around. <laughs> Back from the sky, I'm in Michigan. Yeah, we're central Michigan, right in the central. If you look at Michigan, we're like right here. That's us, right there. <sighs> yeah, well, yeah, Crystal, that well, <laughs> makes a good point. Good call, Joel. <laughs> Where's that bird? We we've seen it on the stream lots of times since she flew it. Chris shows it off for her all the time. Lewis. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I noticed with the spring that when you know once they hit, I'm running into birds, man. Kind of like literally sometimes. I, I saw one kind of cross my screen a couple of times in the last couple of weeks flying around here. All these pine trees we got through this trailer park and be buzzing around them all of a sudden. Whoop. I was like flying down the road one day, come around the corner of a tree or whatever, and something shot out in front of me. And Howie was down the road. I was like, were you flying? He's like, yeah, I was flying a little bit. I said, did you pass me down the road? He said, no, I didn't go down the road or anything. I said, it must have been a bird then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thing was gone. <laughs> well, with them, with their babies hatching and stuff right now, they're literally attacking yeah. the quads. Yep, that's it. He had one they had down in a box down there because it fell out of a tree. And a bunch of the other birds were picking at it like a different kind of bird, you know. Like, hey, this is our tree. Get the hell out of here. Kicking it out or something. I don't know what was up. but So how he had it down in a box for a little while. I don't know whatever happened. If he got it back into a tree and it he got its way or what. But Ryan, save your money, dude. Save up a little bit more and get the HDOs. Yeah, the, the Fat Shark V5s are the Attitude V4 with OLED. The only bonus you really get is it's got the OLED and it now has um a different pad it's not your regular fat shark pad that came it's more that rounded softened like yeah. coated pad it's supposed to be a little bit better pad but now it comes with uh the second module bay and it actually has two modules now instead of just one like the original attitude v4s came with one module it wasn't even a diversity module it was just a standard module, but that now has two modules. So you get two modules and OLED and a better pad for your head. Yeah. Other than that, they're the same thing as the Attitude V4. You still don't have the HDMI to hook it up to your computer so you can play. <coughs> so you're better off getting HD3s or the HDOs or something like that because of the HDMI for simming. Otherwise, you can hook it up to a ground station. You can still get the the video signal from a ground station with your auxiliary jack but you can't get the thing and um i don't know i i didn't hear Stu mention if audio on the dvd re would record on those the dvd does not record audio on the attitude v4s i don't know if the audio will, will record on the dvd on the the new v5s 300 bucks is 50 bucks cheaper than i paid for my attitude v4s 
you get a second module and OLED screen. So for price, for comparison, they're right in there. Uh, they yeah. come down a little bit on their price overall. and I'll stick with my commanders. So if you're looking to buy goggles, Fat Sharks, they're all right. They're a great goggle. I run the V4s and have no problem running the True D and all that, and they're a great goggle. Don't get me wrong. But they don't have the HDMI. That is a fallback. So I, I would, if I was getting into the goggles and looking for the Attitude V5, would be a decent buy for three hundred bucks for your budget goggle. If you don't have any, buy them for right. sure. If you're First like all, going from e scene 0600s, yeah, they would be a great three hundred dollar buy to get you into the Fat Shark type range. Have great screen. The OLED is great screen, from what I hear. The thirty degree or thirty degree field of view isn't all that. Uh, shortened up really overall um, a lot of people say that racing wise you want the skinnier view anyway because you're looking for the four three you want the taller screen not the wider screen for racing because you're up and down with your your field of view is going to be top and bottom so more so than it is wide so with the field of view it's not even a bad thing with the 30 degree so it is definitely better than the attitude v4s but do you <laughs> um yeah, I love my version one commanders. The only th there's a couple of things I don't like. <clears throat> I don't like the fact that the DVR sometimes doesn't want to record. Mm -hmm. um, that could change. be your SD card or touching. Yeah. It even. I, um, I always had a lot of problems with SD cards and goggles lately with these SD cards nowadays. Switching channels sometimes sucks. And here's my two biggest complaints: is the phone faceplate is sucks. I have to replace mine like every month. <laughs> so five, every month I'm spending six dollars on a new faceplate, and they do tend to have some serious light leakage, at least for me. Yeah, if you if you've got the skinnier type of face, the commanders definitely have more light leakage than the fat sharks by far. The fat sharks are a little bit more rounded and more conformal to a face. Yeah, I remember last year, Mike. I got so pissed at them things. I was about ready to throw them. You first got them, dude. He was like, oh. man. Then you got better straps and this and that and worked with them and come around. I want those Orcas. I cannot get my mind off them. I have a credit card kind of just waiting for them. And, uh, I'm not going to get into all those. It's, it, I think it's a lot of hype with those Orcas. They've, they've tried to do that with many other companies. The Sky Zones have tried to do it. And Sky Zones from what Drew was saying on one of his feeds lately is um he wasn't impressed by the new sky zones at all but their their upgrade was not an upgrade by any means he said they like missed the mark all the way so i don't know i don't know man i, th I got faith in those orcas i it's think they're gonna be a thing. preference though i mean you know everybody's face fits different everybody's eye the vision is different i know some people that like how he said he's sticking with the box goggles because uh, it's got the better field of view if you went into the the closer up and whatnot or like the, the e600s that i got they got that plastic adjuster in there or whatever for the focal he said it screwed with his eyes more he doesn't wear glasses so well look at josh ketchum he don't wear fat sharks he uses uh each and 800s yep he's on the 800s and the ec 800s i think are pretty good I've heard a lot of people talking about those, and everybody says that for a hundred dollar goggle right now, that's probably your best box goggle out there. Is the eight hundreds back from the sky? Um, no, goggles are very important. Very, very, very important. Uh, the goggles are good. Your modules mainly your thing with the goggles, in my opinion. If you don't have a good receiver, you're going to get more breakup and whatnot. So your, your receiver is definitely the thing, which the goggles like your fat sharks that you can change the module and this and that and upgrade that is way more compatible and everything else. Uh, the ones where you can't change the module out, you're going to have more issues with it. You're going to end up replacing them more because of the new technology and this and that that's coming out. You're always upgrading. So fat shark is good with that type of thing being able to upgrade with the modules and i think sky zone some of them you can too even um but other than that uh, your your quad 
is always going to have some kind of changing and whatnot. So that's always going to be a variance between it being trees, this or that, or the other thing. So the only thing you can control totally is the quality of the goggles because it doesn't get beat up or this or that. So that's why mostly you work towards your goggles and then the quad you can change. You know, better receive, better video transmitters or stronger transmitters or better antennas. Yeah, your, ra your radio and goggles, unless you're Mike and leave your radio on your trunk. But those are the stuff yeah. you don't break usually. Yeah, can you <laughs> drive away? You'll be replacing the radio. Especially if it gets run over on the main road. I did find most of the batteries that were in it. A couple switches, one gimbal. The thing is, I like uh, you know, what you said about budget goggles being three hundred dollars. Okay, I spent one hundred and fifty dollars on my FXT. You know, and now they're not little goggles things that go right here on your eyes or anything like that but they uh they're comfortable and they work well for me the other ones that i hear a lot of people that wear glasses that are quite comfortable to wear are the fxts that are out the vipers that, that's what i'm talking about yeah, that's what those are the best ones that i've heard as far as glasses fitting they seem to have that little bit bigger fit around They've got like an eyepiece that you can actually wear in there too that helps block a lot of that daylight and extra feed out because they're open on the bottom. But they've also got the monitor that you can detach from it and use as a ground station and, and fly it that way as well too. So lots of there options. There you go. That's what I fly with right there. Yep. I actually had a set of those here at the house for a while, and the guy said I could use them and try them out, but it was wintertime, and I never did fight with them. So. And then the front just snaps off. It's pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, and you end up with a ground station better, basically, because it's got the antennas and the, the two modules built into it. That it it actually has the HDMI fun. output, or maybe it's the input. I'm not sure if those are full diversity, though. I don't know if that's two modules or dual antenna diversity. See, Ishin tried that stuff, too. They did dual antenna diversity, meaning the whatever signal was better antenna-wise is what it fed to your module. It wasn't a true diversity module where it was two different receivers picking up, and the better is what you fed, like your true D and your... LaForge and stuff like that is actual diversity. It's two receiver modules Some you know, versus one. I'm not sure on the FXTs, but at least the antenna diversity is nice. It, it says true diversity in the right. documentation. I'll just put it that way. Yeah, I, I haven't had them. Like I said, I had a pair of them over here that, that, that a friend of mine had and I never really got into the full thing onto it. I was going to kind of do play around with them and do a review, and I just never got around to it because it was winter time. Oh yeah, Ooh. I got a I got an idea for you. I'm going to try it myself. I see a lot of guys taking that patch antenna off mm -hmm. and putting a standard antenna on it, so well, they got their diversity. Patch is good for racing. Yeah, and it's good for like long range because you can get the higher decibel ratings on a patch, but it's always going to be in a directional. Yeah. So if you're flying freestyle around, like we were flying over there at the Central Park there, and I flew over to the water tower and then way over to the other side of the block, it, it probably would have been better video even if I'd have gone with two circular polarized and like one going this way and one going this way. You know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking. So it, it probably would have given me a little bit better signal overall as far as clean, but. That works great as long as you're facing that direction. Yeah. Actually, now that you mentioned that, because the last video I did with the Mobula, the first couple packs, I was facing the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. And uh, then near the end of the video, you see I'm turned around because 
I'm facing more the gaps that I wanted to fly. And the signal was so much better, it was incredible. So the patches are great as long as you position yourself correctly. Yep. That's why when you go to like a multi-GP race or whatever, uh, everything's set off to one spot, and the center of the track usually is where your start line is, and it hits the entire broad range so that you've got full concentration in front of you on that track. You're not going off to the side so far, uh, way behind you, any of that. You're always in front of you so that you've got that patch, so you've got the clean signal. That's a lot of the reasons why they set the tracks up the way they do. I'm going to give it a shot. Because uh, otherwise you start playing around and you get crossover signals and things like that too. You start getting, you know, everybody on 25 milliwatt, up, everybody on circular polarized and close up, to channels or this or that. You start getting up, bounce back feed and interference feed and stuff more. Whereas the patch is more centralized on that feed. It's supposed to be a little bit stronger pickup of the signal so it doesn't get all that back feed. And they go. <laughs> hey, What's a good drone I can string so I can learn how to fly? A good drone you can string? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's being a smart ass. Okay. Indigo, how's that fat shark strap, <laughs> hot dog strap treating you, brother? <coughs> you liking that? Some things are the shizzle, man. I, I don't know what I'd do without my hot dog strap. That's funny you said that because I used to have one of those. You guys remember those helicopters back in the day? They were gas oh, powered, yeah. but they didn't have a radio. You had a string. You fired them up, and you took off, and you. Hey. Yeah, I about killed yeah, myself one of those. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember those helicopters. Yeah, it was one step up from actual remote control, where it was a wired remote. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot, That's wait. such a dangerous toy. <laughs> The yeah, helicopters are dangerous all around. Yeah, right. I know, man. Yeah, I ain't I, flying with those stuff traps. I read a story where there was a dude over in New York. Him and his son were out flying. I seen the picture. Oh, something, something happened, and man, I, I don't know, but I guess it pretty much decapitated the kid or something with the helicopter. It was the dad, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. I can't. I don't know, know. The dad. No, it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. Dude, I, I seen the picture, man. It was like this across his face. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much decapitated, killed him. That kind of shit. Yeah. That's dangerous. Hey, see that? You imagine? Nope. Take, your arm <laughs> off, take your neck right off. It don't. Yeah. yeah. Hit a weak spot, you're done. It's a swinging sword, period. Yeah. And the impact and the and velocity is enough to like put you into shock and everything anyway. You know, I mean, a blunt to the head like that is like, boom, you're instantly knocked the hell out. Yeah. I, good, yeah. I, 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 I love them. They're so much stiffer than regular strap. My fat shark strap lasted me about a month, and I was like, no, that's got to go. I still have not put that strap on my uh, commanders. Really? I'm scared to tear them apart. <laughs> Bring them over, man. We'll do it. <laughs> we'll get it I'd probably, I'd pro I would probably be better off letting somebody else put them on. That way, I ain't, met, you know, because I feel like I'm gonna screw up, so I'm gonna screw up. Yeah. Well, we know you are at five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's the last thing I need. Right. I'll sell my truck to get new goggles. You know I will. The sun sneaks. Uh, now, did it do it with the regular strap too, Indigo? It didn't matter if it was the, the hot dog strap or the other. Still doing it. So you got a skinny face like I do. In the military, man, I actually, uh, the BDU caps are one size. You know, there's no adjustment. I wore a six and a quarter hat. And the military people, six and a quarter. It's like the smallest they can make, or the, the smallest they do make anyway, as far as military army wise. Yep, six and a quarter. Tiny face. 
I, I've noticed that I have to use the thicker foam pad on my fat sharks. Fat shark goggles come with a thin and a thick. I have to use the thicker one all the time. The thin one just doesn't do it. I end up getting some light leakage. And if I don't strap up and snug up good, I'll get some light leakage with mine. But if I snug up pretty good with the with the hot dog strap, give it that yank on the back real quick before I go fly, reset it back on the face. Yeah. No, but later, homie. Once in a while you catch a little bit. You know, if you catch direct sunlight in the peak area where you find yourself doing the old Stevie Wonder and turn your head or something. <laughs> Well, maybe you should paint it, Ryan. Oh, so it's the goggles themselves. Huh? Yeah. It's in the cheaper form. Uh, pushing out that HDO, man. Got to get that hype out there. They didn't take as much time as they should have, huh? Yeah, and to go some electrical tape. Yeah, electrical tape, nice and black. Or as MD-95 would say, just get you some glue stick in the pan and work it on in there real good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mad Dog is a fan of glue, glue, uh, hot glue guns. That's for sure. Lewis, come here, buddy. A Mad Dog, huh? God damn man, my master is blowing up. Is it? Must be over there in, in, the, in the other chat. No, I ain't talking to anybody. This is oh. Well, you said it was your messenger. I figured maybe it was like Nubapalooza. Oh, no. It's everybody else I had some of my friends with. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I have it on mute, so I don't know. <laughs> on that one. That dude, one uh, see you later, part. brother. Indigo, thanks for stopping in. Or Lewis, whoever. Lewis is leaving? Is that who's leaving? Yeah, Lewis is leaving. Oh, uh, yeah, I did. He said Lewis. I was like, oh, yeah, Baduga's bedtime. Yeah, it's nighttime yeah. over there. It's almost morning time over there. It's probably like oh, 12, yeah. 31 o'clock right now. Oh, yeah. Uh, one thirty-five apparently. Yeah, let's see? In the morning? Yeah. Oh, holy shit. Baduga. Wait a minute, bro. A few hours, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hold the fort now. I'm going to go hold me a cigarette. Uh, oh, here you go, Mike. I got one here. Oh, oh shit, where'd you go? <laughs> real ones, too. Oh, what's up, guys? Not too much. I am from Saginaw, hey, Michigan, Edge. Huh? Oh, Edge asked me where I was from. Oh, speaking of, speaking of goblins, what are you from? Huh? Somebody say something. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know you're up there in, in Michigan. I got no Saginaw, but... And Ryan's trying to say something, but I'm not sure he knows what he's trying to say. Ed, you live in Michigan? Where are you at? No, you live in Michigan. I live in frickin' Florida. Yeah. <laughs> Why all these Michiganders and stuff like Dan, uh, he moved out. Yeah. He moved to uh, Florida. Dude, every time I go to say something, I get interrupted. Oh, I know. It's a hangout free-for-all, ain't it? Yeah, your mic's messing up too, Ryan. I think that might have something to do with it. Yeah, you Mike. catch a little bit of lag. Are you outside hanging out on the porch again, Ryan? Ryan's audio always sucks. Now, I don't know how mine is, but his always sucks. And he always lags. Yeah. He's got crappy internet, though. I know it's been, it's been pissing him off lately. I think his, his biggest thing is he's usually on mobile, not on his computer or anything. If he was on his computer, it'd probably be a little bit smoother, but then he can't wander around the house and find things to do because he, he can't sit still. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I hope that's what he's doing, Ryan. 
what? Indigo, don't give me any ideas, man. I'm looking at it and I'm wanting to smoke it, but I better not because I'm on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> right, is that you? You out smoking blunts out on the patio? Mom and no. dad gone on vacation again. You out there smoking some reefer? No, they're home. <laughs> no, sir. Well, uh... well, their last trip wasn't too bad, and you didn't get kicked out when they came home. You didn't party too hard, huh? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, me, I don't do nothing. You don't get to do nothing, do you? Nah. They leave nope. you and strand you. They're like, no, we're getting away from him. We're leaving him in the house. Lock him in. We're going right. away. Right. Throw yeah. away the key. <laughs> right, yeah. Indigo, I am jelly, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Got that orange oh. crust. Yeah. Orange crush, huh? Well, yeah. is, it, is that just what it tastes like, Ryan, or what? Yeah. They don't about... know nothing about that pin county paralyzer. Mike knows what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's some Sunday driver there. Oh. I'll tell you what, Ed, it's just too damn cold and too much of that white crap around in Michigan. That's all I got to say. That's where you separate the men from the ladies, Ed. <laughs> you know, Edge, I, I, used to think about that. I used to think that same thing, Edge. Everybody's like, well, where's all the pilots, man? I ain't got nobody to fly with. What are some? Adam. Can you guys hear me all right? No, we got a guy down the road we're getting in, flying a little bit. Yeah. Found hey, a few bro. other people. Herschel. I, I'm hopefully, actually, I'd like to try to get some kind of multi-GP in the area going, but I don't know if we've got enough solid pilots. So my thing this summer is going to try to be to try to get some kind of gathering of people that we can try to get some multi-GP going up here, try to get like a chapter in the middle of the state here. We've got it like Grand Rapids two and a half hours away has it, and Lansing a few hours away, and Detroit two, two and a half hours away. They've all got chapters, but we don't have anything up here. Hey, so uh, pop the link up again there, Mike. For what, the Hangout? Yeah. yeah Dan, Dan wants to come on. Hey, Ed, take, check this out. It's Michigan, right? June is 60 degrees right now. Yeah, and crazy chilly cold, too, because that wind is so wet. My no furnace just kicked on. Day. Yeah. I walked down to Howie's house before the stream or whatever to say hi and see what he was up to. And I had a pair of shorts on. I was like, man, that was a mistake. I should have put some jeans back on. Yeah, it would be uh, I cleaned up and put shorts on. I was like, I'm just going to chill in the house. So it stopped raining. I was like, I'll go for a walk. Kill time. It would be 79 degrees here, there, uh, Adam. I'd like, I take that right now. Is it letting you in, Dan? Did you see that Badooka jump in and back out of here so fast? I didn't even notice that. He came in and left. I didn't even notice him came in. He's ghosted. That was earlier. I was just reading the group chat box over there, and it says Paduga joined the group and then left the group. I was like, I didn't even see him. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah he, he came in for like uh, 10 seconds or whatever, <laughs> and I just saw his picture, and then he left. Sure does, Edge. It gets cold here, dude. No, that's why I would never let I'm Look, I'm sure Michigan is a beautiful place. In the summertime. In the summer. It, it, in the wintertime, it is, too. You just got to stay in your truck. Yeah. <laughs> actually all that bad for the most part. We didn't get a whole lot of snow. It was we just did hit some cold. cold and windy. At one time, we were colder than the surface of the moon this yeah. winter, last yeah, winter. It was cold. Well, I don't know about all that. No, that's serious. 
<laughs> that before last though it was so much <laughs> snow man it was like miserable out flying because you like had to find spots where you could keep yourself covered so your radio wasn't getting soaked and your goggles weren't getting soaked because none of that stuff's conformal coated you know just yeah, like and it, are, so. and it was on the news i remember yeah, saying mike spot. you remember that mm -hmm. It said Michigan. How cold the day? I mean, I I can't prove it. I haven't been in the moon. That was actually pretty working. damn cold. <laughs> Boss is like, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and work. I'm like, we're indoors. He says, well, whatever. Yeah, no heat indoors. And the one day we we're off to work, <laughs> the guy I was riding with or whatever from place to place or whatever. We turned the corner and his darn CV joint went out on his car. It was like. 30 mile an hour winds and minus 20 that day. We had like a quarter mile to walk to the house we were going to. Holy crap, man. Yeah, it sucked, man. Carry I'm on here. Right here. We're like switching hands to put them in pockets to cover them up because we weren't prepared. We didn't have like gloves and stuff on that day for all that. No, you're working. <laughs> Not going on a damn expedition. <laughs> going on a winter excursion. I didn't bundle up that much. That is a sincere sincere need to fly because uh minus 20 ain't no way brother i've done it i'm not doubting that you dig i'm just saying <coughs> I would die. batteries don't like that shit well i don't care quad actually flies better in the cold dude or not it's the batteries that don't like it I think we might be able to, well, I don't know. I think I always join your streams live, Dan, so I don't know if I even have your email to be able to throw it back at you. Oh. Tampa lifestyle, huh? Does that sound about right there, Dan? Hey Dan, I I, uh, I had your Hitler video with Hubson in my uh, watch later playlist. I finally watched and commented on it yesterday. I think that was pretty funny. Emailed it there, Dan. Should get you. Remix frame was minus 10. Yeah, the, there's been some cold days that I've flown. I did minus 20 and 20 mile an hour winds and got my quad stuck 80 foot up in a tree. That was a fun day. 80 feet is high. 80 feet up. I thought it was, it, I thought, oh man, it's only like 50, 60 feet. So I started trying to climb the tree. Man, I looked back down. I was like, no, I, I'm up at about 30, 40 feet right now, and I'm only halfway. <laughs> Ended up having to get a buddy come with some ropes and climb that. <laughs> that I have, night. He was up there. Same here, Edge. I'll Jeez. wait till spring. I'll get it back. I, I have no problem climbing a tree. I don't care how high it is. As long as it's a good tree, with plenty of branches along the way to give me a step up here and there. But I'm not that tall. And the last tree I got stuck in, not the last tree, but the tree I got stuck in where my bird spent 11 days up there was a pine tree. And there the branches are like 10, 11 feet apart. My short ass ain't climbing that tree. <laughs> Hell no. Dude, I got a buddy up here in Michigan. Dude, all I got to do is call him. It doesn't matter what tree. He's a, he's a lover, Jack. He'll, he'll go up there and get it. It's going to cost me a 30-pack, but he'll go do it. Hey, that sounds worth it to me. Oh, 20 yeah. bucks? Psh, here you go. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm saying. All day long, brother. Oh, indigo. Uh, this one. Wait, what do I got here? 
You talking about that new F7? Yeah. Well, I got I got that one. Yeah. Capacitor, are you talking about the capacitor? No, the capacitor shouldn't matter as far as your battery, I wanna think. As far as making it hot or anything. I, I think yeah. I got a few He's years on the OESR capacitor, yeah. Well, I still climb trees. It only came with a 470 cap? That's crazy. That's kind of small, yeah. Most of the, like, Speedex 35 amp, 30 amp, I think, come with, like, a 520 ferro, something like that. And I usually try to jump it to 1,000 because that's what Race Day Quads has got available easiest. So I usually buy the thousands from them. Then I go, what the uh, man. Unless it's a smaller quad, then you want the small one because there ain't no place to put a thousand. This thing's gonna be legit, man. 50, 50 amps by four, a burst of 55. Indigo, did you get this one yet? I know they're sending you one. Yeah, he's got it. Hey, what are you doing in the guy? Have you put that bird together yet or what with the F7? Look at that bingo capacitor there. That's a thousand micro firing right there. That's a huge capacitor in that point. Indigo, I didn't see that, bro. Message it to me on Facebook. Clean video, though. Never have to worry about video with a thousand. No. <laughs> I put a capacitor on the chameleon mic. Remember how I busted that XD60? Mm -hmm. Well, I finally fixed it, but I put a capacitor on there. Good. That'll help with your video. That's what I'm thinking. I still got to get one of them frames. Chameleon? Built a, I built that one for Richard, and I liked how it flew, so... Dude, I, I, I was going to give up on this frame, and I keep going back to it. Even after I destroy it. <laughs> I bent it all back, hammered it all back together. Well, I thought about getting one of those, but as I've been beating on the Alien for a year now, it's kind of needing some love. So I made <laughs> I have an Alien replacement frame. Getting a little tired. I don't know yet. We'll see. I know I got one arm that's getting the, the tips about shot off it. Indigo, yeah, for sure, dude. This thing is like, I have to say, this is probably the best stack I've ever seen as far as how it looks and the build quality. I mean, you can look at it, you can, the solder is not even cheap. <laughs> they, they did a good job. Well, look at that stack. Talk about crazy good stack. Yeah. That's that power cube, TBS. That's a crazy stack there. That's two and one ESCs on there. They're not four and one. Wow. One That's on. nuts. It's a little interesting at hooking up the motors and everything. I'm used to like, okay, this side's this, this side's that. No, it's you got two on this side and two on this side, and they're front and back. They're all out the sides are they like. ESC one and three are on the back side, and two and four are up top. But you got to know which board's two and which board's four. And <laughs> it's not a bad little stack, though. I like it so far. I haven't flown it too much yet. I've just flown it long and and Ryan, your your lipos are supposed to get hot when you're ripping balls through the wall, brother. That's the way it works. Oh, yeah. I don't care how hot they get as long as they don't explode. Well, I mean, we I use mean, the hand warmers in the wintertime. Oh, yeah. Get done with your flight. That's the first thing you do. Take that pack off and stick it in your pocket with your hand. Warm them back up real quick <laughs> as you're walking. Yeah, they work nice. <laughs> and you put them back in the car to charge them up. <laughs> Ryan, did you like the way the 5043s fly? And that's what matters. <laughs> the batteries are going to get warm. They're going to spin. They're they're going to they're grabbing more air. They're working harder, and that's why they're getting you're the batteries. The IC, they're they're going to get warm. But you talked it. Look at MV Astro. 
Uh, look up Envy Astro. If you don't know who that is, check Envy Astro on YouTube. They do torture tests on batteries. You want to talk about hot packs. Dude. They'll take a China Hobby line and go full throttle until it drops. Uh, Brian, I'm a, I'm a Cyclone. And then charge it back up HD, HV. Oh, yeah, they don't give a shit. If it'll take it. Yeah, the cycle, the Dell Prop Cyclones, the uh, 5046. That's my. I've flown them the whole time. I'm fun flying. I end up giving away the other props because I don't like them. On my Alien, I got the 5149s, I think, right now. Newfound drone. What's up, brother? Wow. Those are crazy, buddy. They definitely don't have the top end speed that I had before, though. Mike, what do you think about those racing props I gave you? I haven't really heard much about those. I haven't run the racer a whole lot, but I do run them. That they're straight up on the racer bill. Uh, hey, when you when you killed your ghost, I got a frame for you. Those ones there, light berries. Yep, yep. I got a frame for you. What are those? Fifty forty one or something like that? Yeah, uh, something like that. Um, um you want to try an X hover frame? Fifty fifty one. Yeah, they're a 50 51 cyclone prop, actually. They're just oh, a yeah. super thin one, but look how much flex those babies have, dude. Oh, yeah. They're wow. fast. Though. Dude, I flew them on my chameleon. It killed my battery in 30 seconds. Oh, yeah. But this one right here with 2,500 kV motors on it, I'll tell you what, that high end. So, woo! She makes some weird, crazy noises, man. She gets going. She's up there. You're right back. The first time I ever put those on that, the quad flew great with Cyclone 5046s, and I put those on there, did a little bit with it. And man, I'll tell you what, they were woo, giving me all kinds of oscillation noises and everything the first time I ever flew them, making my quad woo, wobbling. I <laughs> didn't know what to do with them thin, high pitch props. They are fast, though. I run them on the racer every now and then. I'll rip a pack through here. I ran, matter of fact, I ran that out there at uh, Emerson the last time we went out there. Ran, a, I think, two packs through that when we went out to Emerson. Oh, he wouldn't even listen. I said, I think I ran that quad out there at Emerson the last time we went, Adam. Like you did. Packs. What do you uh, you want to try this one? What's that? The hover? It's an X hover. Five. The bottom out, you know, I ain't gonna build it. I don't like bottom out batteries. <laughs> Break those damn things. I got, I got a frame coming, man. I got this PC frame to build up yet. Right. Anybody want this? X hover. It looks friendly. Yeah. It's the X X hover five inch racer, straight up. It's it's compact, hardcore build. It's fast and light. Let's You're do a giveaway, good Mike. Let's do a giveaway. You pick the guy. Do a giveaway, huh? Do a giveaway. Oh. X hover right here. Brand new frame, never flown. All right. Who can tell us the name? You'll have to probably look at my video. The last time that me and Adam flew was three weeks ago, Adam? Yep, about three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, there was a, a ride along with Adam in it. Adam went to go do a ride along and he had a dead battery for a ride along. So the video starts out with the guy in goggles and Adam doing the ride along. And then crashed. I actually did <laughs> the video that the flight was me, but it showed Adam in the video. So the first one that can tell me what video name it was, what the guy's name in the video, because it said meet somebody or something like that you know i put his name in the descriptions and stuff so the first one that can tell me that how's that what's the guy's name there's like 10 people in chat 11 people in chat right now the only, the only thing is unless you want to pay shipping i'll pay shipping if it's in the united states there you go free shipping too you don't have to go far into my page like i said it was about three weeks ago and it was a ride along we want the guy's name. Ryan, marriage is overrated, bro. Don't worry about that. Stuff. 
Joan Daddy FPV, what's going on? Thanks for stopping in. You're catching us here at the last of the stream, but you're more than welcome to stop in. If you haven't added us already, subscribe, like, all that good stuff. And uh, we try to do Thursday nights, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time till about 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We try to do a hangout, FPV drones, all that good stuff. And Nate, meet yep. Nate. Baduga gets the frame. Baduga, you're going to have to pay shipping, bro. Yeah, you pay shipping, bro. I'll sign it to you. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Maduka's always looking for parts, man. I'm sure he'd pay the shipping for that, man. I'll do it. I think that's about a fifty dollar frame or something like that. On it is forty, fifty bucks or something like that. So for Maduka, I'll pay ten bucks shipping. He pays the rest. Oh, there you go, Maduka. There you go, guys. I thought Maduka gone to bed. Yeah, uh, I I can't. He's think playing coy. He's probably running around them streams with his. The troll mix. <laughs> yep. That's awesome, Nate. Gal. That video was a play on, on words on that one. Nate was the guy that we met that day, him and his daughter. Cool and dude. The song that I used was Nate Fierstein. If you guys don't know who that is, that's NF. He's a local guy out of Gladwin, Michigan, who's big time now. So NF, some Christian rap type stuff. Good music, though. Baduga's passing it on. I passed the frame to somebody else. Okay, Baduga, you got to find a way to pick somebody to pass it to. Then, who needs a who needs a racing frame? X Brand new. X hover race frame. Who wants it? Well, there you go. You'll build it. Customs are a pain in the butt, huh? <laughs> yeah, they are. Only rap I like is on Gifts and Christmas. Well, check them out. If you listen to that song, it's it's more of a mellow type thing. Some good music and lyrics to it more so than anything. It's not. All right, Ryan. Ryan, it's yours. I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah, I vote, I vote Ryan, too, because uh, he needs a divorce. Yeah, I'm going to help you with that divorce, bro. I'm going to send you the string. <laughs> uh, yeah he said he can't get the plate through his his mount yes the session mount plummet ryan message me and uh, i'll uh message me your address i'll send you tomorrow centroid aerial images is asking plummet he just finished a session mount for the chameleon that he's doing he has a question for you he says the plate is really tight having difficulty to get in with it that's tell you. me about it bro yeah, I got cuts all over my hand from that carbon fiber. <laughs> yeah, it's stiff, dude. I really don't know how I'm going to get it in there, to be honest with you. It's designed to go in there, obviously. But I don't know. There must be a trick to it. Yeah, I got the same problem right here. I mean, it should be tight. It's supposed to be. Yeah. Yeah, I got we that AC like frame that. coming in this week. So that'll be my next build. I'm going to. I don't know how much I'll fly that one, but I'm definitely going to fly it. It's a racer, so it'll be like my other racer. The reason I'm doing the, the mount for my ghost right now, I've got two ghosts, and one I used to fly with the GoPro, and I always broke the top plate. So now I've got two ghosts, so I'm going to put a GoPro mount on top of it and keep it for, like, proximity playing around type stuff not so much hard freestyle yeah see what support material to get out i don't know if he can find it mark he like flung it across Show the room and couldn't get the camera in there he wants to see the mount plummet let me put you on the uh, lock is this it right here? Yeah, it's similar to the one that I had, but that is a thin slot under there, dude. I can't get the fiber in. I cannot get that carbon fiber plate in there. I tried. I mean, I got like 20 cuts to my damn thumb trying to push that thing in there. <laughs> when I did the, the one that Richard got, it was <coughs> more like this mount here 
on this front mount and it had all the rounded edges and whatnot like that not yeah. square and like i said it was a front mount but the base was basically like that but man when i put it on there the bottom plate or the plate for it was too thin by itself so it would slap around and it was a real tough squeeze to get it in with the foam. I was afraid of ruining the foam on him, actually putting it in that way. So, yeah. oh, I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna make this work, though. I mean, this is this is a legit tough print, dude. I really want it on there. There's got to be a he. He went right off the universe, so it's got to work. I'm just not figuring it out. There it is. The Ghost Mode Two Version One. Two of them. I have not bought the version two yet. I want to get the version two because I like the boomerang arms better. Uh, the thing I don't like about the ghost mode two is that the screws tend to loosen up and you're always having to tighten up your arms and whatnot. Otherwise, you start getting lots of prop wash and shit like that on it. So oh, yeah, bro. Doing yes. maintenance on it otherwise. But with the mode the version two it's a boomerang arm so both the back arms and both the front arms are one piece so it can't slip around and whatnot so it's a little bit better centroid yeah dude i'll take one I, I dude i go through these like crazy i don't know why but i tend to break these things yeah carbon fiber plate's supposed to slip through the bottom of that that mount and then it's got screws on either side so that you can lock it down into the top of the frame for the chameleon camera rack Yeah, that that looked thin. First look at it, that that's super thin compared to what I've seen on others. It ain't. Uh, it's not the thickness of the plate; it's the width. Oh, so it's just wider, huh? Yeah, thickness. Oh, I didn't had it in there, but not. I'll hit it in there with a hammer. Oh, no, I don't give a shit. That's like for <laughs> like Ti versus the regular frame. Yeah, it's it's literally it's a it's a over a sixteenth of an inch wider than the slot. Yeah, I wonder if they changed it for the TI as far as that top plate being skinnier or something. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Because I'm using this thing's quality, man. I, I don't care. I'll cover my mouth, sand it down. That's why I bought these things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This car. Well, hey, guys, down. it's like uh, 9 07. We usually end about 9 o'clock. I know the hot dog stream, I'm sure, just came on. And they'll be on for an hour or so. And uh, there's some other streams and whatnot. So I'm going to say that's going to be for the night. A drone worship, hopefully. Right. <laughs> get, you to come in get you in. Thanks, everyone, for stopping by. We'll be back on next Thursday, like I said, sure. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And, Ryan, I'm not sorry for pissing your wife off. Send it, yeah. brother. <laughs> Centroid, have you started your show back up like a regular or just kind of a hit and miss thing? I want to say you're just doing like hit and miss streams right now, kind of, aren't you? Now's the time for a shameless plug if you want. <laughs> Lots of shows going on throughout the week, though. Back from the Sky's been doing some live streams. Check them out. Make sure you guys get on there. Lots of good information for him about uh, different drones as far as FPV getting into and lots of good information about GPS drones and whatnot. Um, so check him out. Chill. When did Back from the Sky ever go live? I haven't ever seen oh, him live. Good. What the hell? It looks like he needs to add your, your bell, doesn't he? That's right. I just saw a yeah. screenshot, buddy. I'll email you. <laughs> so anyway, guys, hit and miss for now until school stops. That won't be long, man. That's good. That's good. And then he'll be out there ripping those packs. He's got two builds in now, Centroid Aerial Images, two FPV builds in now, and it, it, he hasn't stopped, so. But anyway, guys, we'll see you next week. Enjoy. Thanks for stopping in. Have a good weekend. Happy flying. Hope the weather's great. All that good stuff. Until we see you again, enjoy. Peace out. Cheers. Salute, everybody. Cheers, brother. Cheers.